In today's hour school, eight students on a ghost hunt. You're scared. Yes. I'm good. If you're a ghost, give us a sign. Will they all make it out? All right. Hello? Is anybody there? If, if, you, if you're watching this, please stay away from our school. There's something here. Meet our new year seven. Sick pockets! It's the most important school year of their life so far. Heck was it? They're all starting here <laughs> together. That level of noise is absolutely disgusting. <laughs> This is some better days. You stink to <laughs> CBBC have filled the entire place with cameras, so you'll get to watch Year 7 every step of the way. Whoa! Stop waving at me! Yeah! Hello, I'm Mr Jones. I'm a maths teacher here at our school, and every time that you're here, I'm going to be here too. Right now, I'm late for a lesson. Excuse me. Come on in. Boom. Mic drop. Our school in Sheffield has been here almost 80 years. Exciting things have happened. Generations of students have learned their lessons here. Like how to sit at a table. Or not. <laughs> How to behave in a lesson. No stupid noises, no drinks, no breathing. And even the law of gravity. If our school could talk, it would have so many stories to tell. But instead, it's up to our history teacher, Mrs. Black, to bring our past to life. So, what we're looking at today is we're looking at who will make the best wife for Henry VIII. And today, she's going way back and talking Tudors. Like to know the names of Henry's six wives and to be able to explain a social and political reason why he married them. And for six volunteers now. I had to dress up as Henry VIII. I had to wear a big, massive jacket thing and I was boiling. Welcome to a very special dating game show. Today we are going to fix Henry up with a lovely lassie based upon polit political reasons and social reasons. Come on in, Henry! What are you trying about? What are you trying about? What are you trying about? Thank you, thank you. Thank you. Shut up again. Shut up. I actually need Wayne in every one of my lessons to actually tell people that if they don't listen to me, he's going to have the power to chop off their head. How dare you boo me? <laughs> Is that me throne? That's your throne. Watch Thank my you. <laughs> the first wife, yeah. Catherine of Aragon. <laughs> and Berlin, for your next queen, be prepared to cheer. I had to wear this, like, dress. Oh, like sparkly bits. I felt like embarrassing, man. <laughs> Sometimes the lads won't wear a dress because they get embarrassed, but the lads actually were clambering in those dresses. <laughs> Sit on my lap if you want. Oh, what? Catherine What's your name and where'd you come from, Pet? Henry married me in June of 1509 when I was 18. King Henry and I have been having an affair behind her back oh. and I am pregnant. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Henry has just divorced Anne of Cleves as he said she looked like a Belgian horse. <laughs> Chloe Kardashian learned everything from me and this is why Henry fancies me. <laughs> no other wives, his performance was good because they, they, were, they were good looking, but the dress wasn't as good as mine. So Henry VIII didn't want them, he wanted me. So we have our winner. Yeah, 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 yeah. 
I'm embarrassed because Jaffa shout out turned out to be my wife. Yeah, which is a very good thing. I think you'd be a great couple. Shanaz, I've been married to Jaffa. <laughs> I've been pregnant. I definitely think Miss Black is a big part of um, making history a lot of fun. She always thinks of really good lessons. How's your handwriting coming on? And the thing with Mrs Black is, even out of school, she's always talking about history. So this week at school, we've been looking at the Tudors. You looked at that in primary school, didn't you? Yeah. You're getting dizzy, are you? Can you remember Henry VIII? When I try to speak to my son about history, he's just not interested at all. Um, I do test some of my lessons on him because he's a year seven. He prefers to be on his, on his games. The king could cut off your head like that. Would you like your head put on a pole? I wouldn't like to teach my own children. That would be quite hard. What do you think you're going to be doing in school today, Imogen? Uh, maths. Maths? We're looking at the Sheffield Blitz during World War II. So that's what my year sevens are going to be studying today. I remember when I was at school and the teachers made it fun. The lessons I hated were I messed about in was when I was bored out of my head. So as a teacher, I like to mix it up. The day I become a boring teacher is the day I quit teaching, really. So, yeah. <laughs> yeah. As we all start another day in the 21st century, Mrs Black is travelling back in time to the 1940s. Today's title is What Can I Learn From Sources About the Sheffield Blitz? What's your favourite? <laughs> now, when anyone know what this is? They used it in the war to blow people's ears off. Oh, why? Why? Why did they use it? Go on. Is it maybe like to signal when something was going to happen? Right, I'll give you a clue. You're doing well, you're doing well. Wait there. Okay. No, I know what I know what it is. I know what it's for. I think history is awesome. Like some people think it's really boring and it's got nothing to do with anything now. But I just like learning about things that have that have happened in the past. Does anyone know how Farid is dressed today, Shanaz? He's a fire god. He's a fire god, well done. During World War II, the home guard that was like pensioners, Dad's <laughs> army, had to wear this uniform. I found this in our school when I was rummaging round. I think that there's loads of history on our school, which is a good thing about it, because we can learn about where, where we're learning and where we're studying at. The Sheffield Blitz took place on December the 12th, 1940, and in the head teacher's log of this school in 1940, I found this. An alert was sounded, sounded at 7pm 7 7 this evening. This evening. The, the students, students were all successfully, all successfully placed, placed in the shelters, shelters and, and remained during the very heavy air raids on the city. My mum's great granddad was in the war and um, he was fighting and then my mum's great grandma was working as a nurse. If my great, great, great granddad was still alive, he, I would have been able to know all about World War II. That's why I really like learning about history. Family is really important to Shanaz. My little brother's six. My other brother, Arkan, he's eight years old. What year will I be in when we are caught on contact? I'll be in year 11 when we are goes into year seven. Oh, that's good, cos I can see them then. They are sweet sometimes, but sometimes they're annoying and naughty. <laughs> What I want to do when I'm older is I want to become a gymnast. I want to be a vet because I really like animals. I want to be an author because I like, I like reading books, but then I really want to write my own story. I like to read a lot. Um, I've got like a massive bookshelf full of books that I've had from like years ago that I haven't read yet, so I'm trying to like read them all. Shanaz loves stories, but sometimes the best ones are right under your nose. And Mrs Black's been finding out some stories about the school. Over the years, there have been creepy tales about strange and unexplained happenings. And for Mrs Black, it's all part of the power of history. 
Local rumour has it that the school was used as a hospital during World War II. The caretakers tell me that in my classroom they had um, hospital beds. Apparently there's lots of stories about hauntings on the corridor. So this is the head teacher and I found this hat and this hat I believe belonged to that head teacher. Would anyone like to try on this hat? Go on Michael. Let's see how lovely you look in it. I'm the head teacher. I'm the master now. <laughs> Be quiet. Now, legend has it that if the hat leaves the building, then the head teacher's ghost is going to run after people. Grooming like this. <laughs> My friend said it tastes you. Sure it will, sure it will. <laughs> I don't, I don't, I don't know. believe in that kind of thing. Because if you think about it, this ghost in building, it could even be a poltergeist, and but then why it we can kill about, you. Why are we talking about this while we're in school? Now, last night, I was here till about 7 o'clock, and I spoke to the caretaker. Now, he said that outside these double doors out here, he had seen a nurse... There was two nurses with a man in the middle and the nurses were carrying the man down the corridor. That might tie to this building being a hospital during the war. We're not sure about this, we're still researching this. I'm not afraid of ghosts. Because they don't exist. And it sounds weird, but I'd like to become a ghost and die before people I don't like. Because then people I don't really like, I could just haunt them. I think it'd be quite cool to be a ghost. Because you could go to the zoo, pick up a penguin and pretend it's flying. If I saw a ghost, I'd make friends with it, see if it's friendly first. And if it isn't friendly, I'd just... whack it with my straightener or something. <laughs> Once my door, it kept opening, and like it was just like opening and closing. Oh! And... That happened to me, but that was because the windows were open. I believe in the paranormal. I've seen ghosts. And we were walking with my mum in the graveyard, and I saw something go like that, and like, it was literally an arm, and, and I looked around and no one was there. It was so creepy. We went into the attic, they were all chairs stuck up, stacked on each other in a big row, and we could hear someone like scraping along the floor. We looked behind us, there were like this brick moving around in circles. All right, weird. I think the average kid would think that school is boring, but not this school. This school is haunted. The humanities corridor is supposed to be the most haunted corridor in school. Right, that corridor is the coldest corridor in the school. When you walk in through the other doors, you can really feel like a, a tense kind of breeze or like kind of like a paranormal kind of wave just hit you. I was on the corridor. history corridor. Yeah. This is what I heard. She's here. She's really here. That's what I think. <laughs> that sounds just like Amy to me. But look what the caretaker found on CCTV. Did you see that? Let's watch it again. What is that? Oh, I wouldn't want to be roaming those corridors at night. But that's exactly what some of our Year 7s are going to do. Mrs Black has arranged a spooky sleepover for some of her keenest historians so they can explore the school's wartime past and have a bit of ghostly fun too. As the rest of the school go home for the night, the Year 7 historians gather with Mrs Black and Mr Webb. They both look a bit different. I decided to wear a World War II nurse's uniform. The kids really, really loved it. This looks smart. Yo. I got to wear this uh, amazing uniform, uh, which was unlike anything that I'd ever, ever worn. He actually looked pretty cool in it, he did. With uh, his cap on and all his nice uniform, massive boots, it suited him, yeah. So we're going to transport you back to our school 1940s style and what we've got in the box is the original school uniforms so let's get ourselves kitted up so there you go it's like we just jumped through a door into 1940s it definitely looked very very smart oh man the 
Highs are much more better. I think that the school uniform was very nice because it was red. And the best part is, they were comfortable. I like this uniform better, it's way more yeah. swag. To be honest, I like them. I think they were better than these uniforms. Our historians are split into two teams and given clues to hunt for links to the school's wartime past. So, let's go before it gets dark and the ghost will get us. I want the ghost to get me. Mm, I know. Ghosts? What a bunch of hippie dippy baloney. <laughs> So, what do you think these white patches are on the field? They're clues. What do you think was here? What would protect you from the bombs? <gasps> no, Anderson shelter. Is it? No. Not no. an Anderson shelter, but you're close. You're close. A bit better than an Anderson shelter. What would be deep I'm underground? Underneath. A big bunker underneath the ground. It was very weird to know that like, loads of kids would have walked through there and like deep underground, right beneath our feet. So we're literally right on the bunker. When Miss Black told us about um, the bunkers underground, I felt excited because I haven't really heard of it and it was quite cool that the, it, it was still there. So the students in this school, during the night of the Sheffield Blitz, oh. they had to come out and hide in the bunker. Oh, and, yeah. and places downtown got really, really Oh, bombed. yeah, they tried to destroy um, the metal factories because they knew that's how they made the bombs. And well done, Shanaz. When you've got good teachers, like Miss Black, who are teaching you properly and who are acting out things, you can get really into it and you like start to like it more. If you are going on a journey, you will need me early. Somewhere to put the teddy. Have you packed him already? Mr Shaw looks after him and keeps me with this stationery. Shall we try B22 yeah. first? Right, let's go then. Let's see Why what it says. See where it might be. It's not in here. So it said something about his stationery cupboard. It could didn't it? be. It could be around his desk. I can feel the presence. Check it. Check it off, cupboard. Presents. No. Yeah, right here, man. I found it. Oh. Mine. It might not be we'll Teddy. Pop it on this front table then. Right, who might have been putting Teddies in suitcases? Remember, in the 1940s here. Oh, um, a kid who has to evacuate because it's too dangerous for them. Too dangerous. It must have been quite scary. Can you imagine what, I mean, what must it have been like? You suddenly get told, oh, you've got to go and move, because people would have gone right you out into the countryside. It's scary. Yeah. yeah, like you're leaving all your past behind that like you worked for years and it's just gone like that. Yeah. I am a very old book that tells of the night the school shook. You will find me in the room of the king of the school. It said the king of the school. So it was like, Mr Jones. That's our head teacher. I wonder what they'll find in his office. So, what are we looking for? I like this. It's an old book. I found it, I found it. Right, OK. Oh, wow. Can I Some read it sort of a diary. We found, like, an old log book in Miss Jones' office. Like, a very... You could tell it was old, cos you could, you could see the dates in it, like, 1940s, or in the war and everything. And if you look, the head teacher's name, what do you know? It's about the head teacher's name of our school. Has... Oh, yeah, it's the yeah. same as um, our head teacher now. It's, it's, do you think it's the same guy? Unless it is, he'd be like paranormal, like a, like a vampire or something, something like that. D. Jones, that is what our principal is called now. That is weird. I thought that was a bit spooky. That sent shivers down my spine. Yeah. Dean Jones. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Dean Jones. Yeah. The, yeah. Could have been his great granddad or great great granddad, but maybe he's always been here. And that's not the only link to the old head teacher. Oh, look a bell! Oh, ding dong! I belong to the head. I am cracked and worn. See? That makes the sense. Cracked. Yeah. yeah. And worn. It's worn. And over in the atrium, there's one final discovery. These are a family's gas masks. Now, during World War II, when they closed this school down, they the, had some people in our science lab making these for the entire country. So these would have been made in our school. <laughs> it's probably an improvement on my face. It's amazing to think of the history in our school and of all those who've walked the corridors in the past.
with the history hunt over, time for some more fun. And it wouldn't be a sleepover without some haunting stories. Now, does anyone know any ghost stories while we're sat in the dark? A good ghost story has to be at night, and it has to be in the darkness, and you have to have torches. Well, it's not a story, it's actually true what happened to my cousin. You may not think that I believe in ghosts, but I do believe in spirits. We were on Xbox, and at the time it was an Xbox 360. <laughs> many, many, many years ago, <laughs> there was this girl who absolutely hated life. We heard uh, my other cousin's door slam shut, and I turned around, this face just popped up and screamed. Whoever listens to the story, she will go after. <laughs> One of the ghost stories we've heard about is like a green lady with just a white dress on, walks the humanities corridor. So what we're going to be doing next is we're going to be going up to the humanities corridor to look for the ghost of the green lady. Things are about to get really scary. I'm watching from behind my settee, but if you don't like being frightened, maybe this bit's not for you. Like all the best horror stories, Year 7 are about to do the worst thing possible. Split up and explore the school in the dark. I felt scared. What if something happened? What would we do? You don't know what's in the dark. Could be shadows blending in, you don't really know. Can you say anything? What? You feel a bit what? I just feel a little bit cold. A little bit cold? Yeah. Oh, I know. It is a bit nippy. Being in school like the, in the dark, you see like um, weird things. Like we looked into a classroom and we saw shadows of ourselves and um, they got scared. <laughs> My mum was playing tricks on me because I could hear um, like weird noises. Then I started like thinking, what if I see this and this? It just got really weird. <laughs> it's probably just the others trying to prank us. Down there. Okay, I heard the little chat around. Okay, everyone stick together. <laughs> Who was that? She knows she was like, if she was the scaredest, she was more scared than me. Yeah, I knew what I was. This is so scary. I'm not gonna see. I'm not I think I'm going to sleep after this. I was really, 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 really scared. I thought you liked scary stuff. We went into Miss Blight's classroom, which was part of the hospital wards in the Sheffield Blitz, I think it were. If people are brave enough, because there was four beds laid out here. So, I'm she's not... there, I'll go there, and I think I'm you... I'm not going anywhere. Exactly. Go on, I dare you. Line yourselves up where the beds would have been. I'm not going no, anywhere. No, I'm scared. I'm scared. I'm so scared. Mr Webb wanted us to lie down on the tables. We went, no, because it was too creepy. Don't lay down! Don't lay down! Mr. Webb went down and laid on the table, like a daft person would do. Wait, Mr. Webb. Sir, you're you alright? I don't think I'm in it. Sir, sir. I got scared as well because I didn't really know what was happening with Mr. Webb. Sir, stop lying. Stop faking it. Stop! Oh, the corridor was scary enough, Mr. Webb just topping that up. Yeah, so it got us good, very bad. So, up ahead is the humanities corridor. Now, allegedly, this is the most haunted part of the school. Miss Black where... spooked us out because why did she have to whisper? She's like, you know, I was talking to the kids. I was like, you can talk in your normal voice, you know, you don't have to freak me out even more. <laughs> This is where the most activity takes place. This is where it's coldest. This is where the green lady has been spotted. And we're going to find out where she stands and we're going to stand there. It was colder, it was darker, and Miss told us to turn off our torches so we couldn't shine them about anything. It was just like was just nothing, just walking around. She stands exactly here, looking out this window. No word of a lie, when we stood where she apparently would stood, 
it was colder and you could like feel like a presence. It was like it's cold here, George, you're right. It's definitely cold here. Shinaz. I think I think it's our worst for years. I was frightened. It was absolutely horrible. Boom, boom, boom. <laughs> but after all that, it was just the other group. As soon as they opened the door, we jumped in their face, so they got freaked out. <laughs> you scary cat! You're such a wuss! And then I ran to the door. I was like, "Oh, you idiots! What are you doing?" I'm glad that's done. I'm sure everyone will have a good night's sleep now. Everyone's tired, go on, team. Mimi! All right, time for bed, everybody. Okay, just... heads down. Make yourselves nice and comfy. Sweet dreams. Hope nothing goes bump in the night. What scares me most about the dark is that you never know. The dark is full of wonders. It's the morning after. Hey, do you know the best part about getting up? What? It's going back to sleep. <laughs> and in the light of day, the Year 7 historians are reflecting on last night's events. Did you have nightmares? No, but I had a dream my ear spider. Luckily, I didn't have nightmares, but I was worried about it. We couldn't sleep because we kept in here, like, noises, and then, like, we, in the middle of the night, we heard a girl screaming, and we, we were freaked out. I heard a noise that went... Ooh. Not many kids can really say that they've slept at their own school and learned so much about, like, the history of the school. I'm proud of this school because it survived. It's worked its way through World War II. Most kids wouldn't even know about the history of this school. I agree. There's so much history around here. And no reason to be scared of any of it. Next time, can our Year 7 students teach the teachers how like to rap? It. It's crap. Rap is a word, but for me, it's a figure. Get your songs right and your brain gets bigger. I'm gonna get you back so bad. You watch. You watch. I'm gonna get you back so bad.